Yeah. One minute. Yeah. <laughs> Guess who? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Grendel. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, hold on one second. I'm not quite here yet. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm better. That's good. All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I just came to say hello and to answer any questions you might have that are very general about things you're going through right now because there's a lot of energies, a lot of things going on around the world, around the solar system, around the galaxy, around the sun. So uh, I have at it, if you will. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Good to see you all, and I, um, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, is there anyone that has any questions for Grendel then? Yeah. I know there is some. But Sharon's I don't. just asked if you could give just a general update. You mentioned a lot of things going on. If you would maybe talk about some of the things update. that are happening. Oh my God! I'll be here. For <laughs> a um. How about some I of the things that are happening within the government? I think that's probably what he's referring yeah, to. Yeah, there's all kinds of governmental things, economic things. Um, there's so much confusion on the planet as far as whose leadership should be followed in some ways and what is good leadership. And some people are turning a blind eye to many things that are happening and other people are demonstrating and doing all that, not just on the United States side, but there are other places in the world where things are well. happening as well. What? Oh, all right. So, yes. So many changes are happening in the, in the, in the ideology of politics because it's never been like this before. It's always been so proper and so there's always been protocols that have been met. There's always been certain laws and uh, rules that have been uh, kept, but now they're being broken and protocols are being broken and things are becoming a little more chaotic. And it's not only from your government that this is happening, but um, from Korean governments, from Russian governments, from uh, Asian governments. These things are not uh, clicking like they used to. They see that the times have changed, and so they are starting to move more independently from the rest of the world where they were at one time really afraid to do so, but now they see opportunities where they can be more independent in many ways. And this is causing a great deal of trouble uh, with communication. So that is an update that uh, I can give you right now. Any questions? Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? If you are correct, and everything's really uh, yeah. Um, oh, I have yeah. some feedback. There but, uh, is so a lot of things that are changing in the idea, the ideology of how things should be run at this time. Because, well, a catalyst was your the president Trump because he's disregarded a lot of uh, protocols. He's disregarded rules and regular put put his family in places where they shouldn't really be, and um, there's a lot of a lot of things going on. He still has a great amount of support because he is the president and he does have the power. And there are people afraid to go against him, um, and they're afraid of what he can do because it, he has already demonstrated that he is a very powerful person in many ways. 
He may not be correct all the time, but he is powerful. And he is not always... Um, uh, people may look at him as a little bit off balance. And um, there, he's not alone. Kanje in from Korea. Would you call that a balance? Nah. nah. You, there are several others that are not quite balanced. Some from the African governments as well that are like a, a power hungry and a, uh, insane with power. Power can make you crazy. So remember that. Yes. Any other questions? Does anyone else have a question? If you do, then uh, let me know and we can put it through. You need to understand that when someone has power and they are good at ruling, that is that they are well balanced in what they are thinking and doing. They have their mind on the people and not on themselves necessarily. But when you change that direction and put the power in your own mind and, and the attention on yourself to be a great leader or to be remembered in history as a great person, then things sort of fall apart a little bit because you're not doing what you should be doing. You're doing what you think will make you look good. And that's not always the right thing. Yeah. I do. I have a question. Uh, I do have a question regarding all of this because yeah. we see some very bad behavior from um, yeah. different people across the world. Yeah. And yeah. has there ever been such a time that it has been so chaotic like this? Yeah. Well, medieval times. Yeah. When you had bad acting popes and things of that nature back in those days where the popes were were very corrupt and some people still think they are and when the church was just uh forcing people to do things the way they wanted them to do it and not really following god's love but what they thought but you see fear ruled at those times and and the 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 kings and queens were fearful of each other. They were fearful of the church. And so when there's a lot of fear, and there's a lot of fear growing now, there's a lot of bad decisions made. So you have to remember, there have been times in, well, a, a, a long time ago in history where fear ruled the earth in the sense that no one would move in any direction because they were afraid or they would attack because they were afraid that if they didn't attack first, they would be attacked or that they wanted to the power of some other place. And they figure if they surprise attack, then they might, might uh, overcome some other place, but everyone was fearful of each other. And, um, this is becoming another medieval kind of period where yeah. fear is starting to rue the day. Yeah, that, that, that's the question that, that it's so surprising. Don't you think that there was a moment, it seemed that we were really on a positive trajectory yeah. and then it just, we really shifted indefinitely into this um, well, this, yeah, the evil kind of mentality, and I'm. I, I wonder, is it possible to shift out of it, or do we, or is oh, this sort of the last bastion of of the negativity sort of rising up, trying to take hold? Is that why it's come on so strong? Well, let me. I don't want to dwell on the negativity. Sure, of course, of course. Because we can move beyond that. We can move forward. We can do a lot of things, but we have to take action. And that's what I'm doing where I am at. In Israel, I'm taking my own kind of action and I'm moving forward in a positive way as much as possible. And that's what you all should do is move forward as, mo as positively as you can in these times because they are going to have some effect on the, everything around you and the people around you, etc. So you must be the positive example. You must be the light in the darkness, so to speak. 
So, but that's why I bring these things up is because the things are getting to a place where you need to stand up and say, all right, we have to stay positive. We have to move forward. We have to, and you're going to say, how are we going to do this? Because there are many different things against us, but you got to be yourself and you got to be the truth of the matter. If you don't stand for the truth, then you're just going to be washed away by the tide. So um, this is an important time to gather together and talk about the positive things and talk about how you can move forward and how, talk about how to keep the ascension moving in a great way because that's what we're here for. And that's a, a reason why I brought that up is because, heck, yeah, you guys are the answer to that problem. You guys, as many of you uh, can, just join together in prayer, thought, positivity. It will be helpful, believe me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, there's a question in the in the chat uh, by, uh, yeah. by Angie about David Wilcox info. I um, wanted yeah. to know, is it legitimate info, and is it something that to, is to be trusted? or, or what Well, I haven't seen it? anything recently, but mm -hmm. if it's a... Uh, there's many times that David is very good. Many times. And, and Corey Good also. Many times. But there are also just as many times where they're way out. <laughs> um, they, why would that be, then? Well, they see things, they hear things, they don't filter it through some of the the right filters. There, some of that negativity that comes out through them is just not filtered. And some of these stories about uh, that are just incredible are unbelievable and should not be believed. So. Um, because there's no war going on under the earth. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, uh, that's just, if that were happening, uh, there would be sinkholes all over the place. There would be people being discovered right and left, doing uh, warlike things right under your feet. Um, but they say, oh, they're way down deep. No, how, how is it that the world is, uh, there's no such huge hollow area that they yeah. could have a war in. Yeah. So it's, it's, some of those things are just ridiculous. It's just a matter of showing some discernment and showing yeah, some Yeah, they just, he just spews out everything that comes to his head. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it's a good thing to follow your gut. And maybe if your gut says to you, I don't know if that's really feasible or plausible, then maybe, yes. maybe you should trust that instinct. But. Think about the feasibility. That is one part of it. And, the, and think about how negative that is. That's yeah. really a very negative thing. So who planted that seed where, you know, so that people could be going, wow, there's a war going on. We have to be careful. And, oh, I, I'm going now. That's ridiculous. I've been under there. <laughs> I've met, I met some of the people that uh, live under the earth. There are many, and they're not warring. They're all separate colonies, and they're all separated by different things. So, they're they're at peace at this point. <laughs> mm, good. Well, that's good to know. Uh, Don had asked the question, and I don't know what he was referring to exactly, but he had asked, are the crystalline towers being activated? Well, I, I think he's talking about the stargates as I see. well. Okay. Because uh, they, they've been called many different things over the centuries. Uh, the stargates are starting to be worked on and activated because they will be needed for future use. And they will be needed after first contact. They will. There's many uses for them. They were used in the ancient world. They're in the sides of mountains. They're in many of the very popular uh, alien sites, such as Stonehenge and Machu Picchu, uh, Puma Punka, uh, Easter Island. Many of these places have the pyramids. They, they have their stargates there. 
and the, yes, they are starting to be tested and activated. Perfect. Thank you. Did you have another question, Don, or regarding that? Is that, or am I talking about the right things, or are you talking about something different? May it have a different name? Yeah. If you if you want to if you want to answer, go ahead. You can. Go ahead, Don. Let me. I think he. I think he was muted. Let me unmute him. No, he's not muted. He can talk. Okay. Go ahead. No, I yes. have no other questions at this time. Um, I was told that the, the towers were in Telus, which was uh, one of the locations inside the Earth. Ah, yes. Okay, I understand what you're talking about. There, there are some uh, structures under the Earth that have been created, and they've been around for centuries, literally centuries, thousands of years. And those are powerhouses. They activate vortexes. They activate different things as well. Uh, the crystal skulls, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the crystal skulls will be able to uh, be controllers of some of this uh, ancient technology. That popped into my head, sorry. Oh. I was told. Did that, that answer uh, your question at all? Yes, it does. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the question. You're welcome. I have a question. Yes. Um, Grindel, this is Christine. Yes. Blessed be. Um, I was wondering, um, for some of us who collect crystal skulls, yes. um, do our skulls um, have a small link to the main, the, to the major ones? Oh, there are many, many crystal skulls. It depends on who made it. Let me explain. Okay. When a relic is made, and when these crystal skulls were made, they are made by special uh, uh, people with energies that have that can put the energy into the stone. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So there are many, many people out there <laughs> just making crystal little crystal skulls because they sell. They're they're good, but there are actually smaller relics of the skulls that are made by people that put energy into them. And those are the ones that have great connection with the crystal skulls, not just any old glass or crystal skull that you may find, but it depends on who makes it. And, and you will be able to tell by the energy in the skull if it is a relic or if it's just a piece of art that someone made. But if I put um, healing energy into oh, it yeah. and focus and um, direct it to um, helping the earth and yes. connecting to all this, if, if my intention is put into it, will that yes. help or enable oh, the... Um, you can intention stones. You can intention yes. your crystal skulls you can help uh -huh. you can put energy in them yourself yes yes um that makes them strong powerful healing of uh, stones i wouldn't call them a relic because they weren't made with the the energy that the relics were made with but you can empower your crystals you can empower your stones and many of you do that all the time so yes you can yes. empower your stones and make them into healing crystals. They are helpful, yes. Thank you. Thank you. you are welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question too. Is it is it can you connect into that crystalline energy then? The one the, yes. the main the, like the max skulls, she could use her she could program her skulls that she has or any kind of uh, crystal yes. that the, she could to, to that work are, together. The ones that are relics can be used to hook into that system yes and you can intention your stones to uh perhaps connect with that system it won't be the same kind of connection as an actual relic with the original energy in it but you will be able to get some of the energy and feel some of the connection there it's okay. just like um it would be a lesser kind of just like copper it is a great 
conductor, but there are lesser metals that do still do conducting. That's what it would be like. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. And, uh, there's a question here in the room. Okay. And then, okay, perfect. Go ahead. And yeah. then after that, Shira will go. All right. I bought a crystal head from the owner of Cernogy, one of the crystal skulls. Yes. And he would sit next to the crystal skull for a few days. Was there any kind of um, absorption from that crystal skull into this crystal skull that I have? There could be. What Were they both relics and originals? or uh, were they? Cernogy was the original, one of the 13. Oh, one of the 13? 13 you had one has. of the 13? Yes. If that crystal skull is in and around other uh, crystals or crystal skulls or stones or it depends on the intention also that the people draw the energy from the crystal skulls and there's many uses for them but they are to uh, interact with all the other crystal technology that are is on the earth which is actually the uh, stargates and the crystal towers and the different things that are and the there are some crystal pyramids also uh, but yes energy can be gained by them they are an endless source of energy so if I work with them I connect with this energy you can connect with it yes uh, how well I don't know okay. depends on your belief system depends on your purpose depends on many things and I would have to be there to okay. look at that vibrational connection okay. but it does work yes okay, and if you're doing it for positivity that would be positive yes positive that would be yeah yeah you would help yeah <laughs> yeah okay. Okay, thank you. you're welcome did you understand what I was telling her I understood did you understand Christine because I think it was more for Christine. I did, I, I did. I was going to ask him about my um, skull that I was trying to show him. Yes, yeah, yeah. I feel the energy. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, that's good energy. You put a lot of healing energy into that. Yes. Yeah. And this guy, yeah. too. I have yeah. a lot of little ones, too. I put yes. them around the globe, the world. Yes. Thank yeah. you, Grendel. Thank you. I just think, just to add on to what Grendel was saying, if you feel called to a skull or to any kind of um, crystal or something like that, then you just have to trust that that was the one that you need to be working with. And you can intend as much as you can. And, and like Grendel was saying, you know, but your work may be much different than the work of this, that a skull oh, itself. Yeah. So, you know, trust whatever there. you're you're attracted to because it, there's a reason for it. So there's all kinds of reasons for yeah. the the energies of the crystal skulls to be used. But let me tell you this: when they come together, finally, they are the gauge. They are the controllers of the stargates and the, all the other important technology that is crystal line based on the planet because they were created by those entities that have a great technology with the crystals. So you, you understand when they come together at some point Perfect. how powerful they really are. There's actually 13 of the major crystal skulls and there's one that is a controller which would be in the middle of the 12. And be moved to um, control certain energies of each of the skulls. It's hard to explain, but I, and I've only read about it and only understood about it through teachings that are out there in the galaxy. But it is very important that they be gathered at some point, and some of them are in storage at this time and uh, on sitting on shelves in warehouses or whatever a couple of them have been purchased as art items and are not being utilized for their actual purpose so they have to be realized and they have to be moved into a public domain almost okay perfect 
Um, if you have, if you're, if you're, uh, you're ready, we have a question from Sheer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Grindel, how are you? I am. I'm doing good. Yeah. Well, I have two questions. The first one is about Corey Good. You said that some of the information is very, very good. Which kind of uh, information is it for those who watch uh, Cosmic Disclosure? Well, let me tell you, there's so much coming out of them. I mean, it's been, they've been doing this for years now. More than a year, I'm sure. How long has it been? But um, you'll be able to resonate with the positive information and you'll be able to understand what I mean when they start uh, giving some negative information. But, um, but Corey Good is, uh, and Bob, Will, uh, yeah, yeah, Wilcock, he is, um, they have, they've tapped into a source of information that's very good, but they have to be sure that they stay right on that source because any movement in the channeling left or right or whatever can cause them to pick up another very similar channel but but one that is not right so that is the danger of channeling these days is you have to be very aware of what's what's happening and pick up on the negative and the positive flow. So if like if I am speaking right now and you're feeling negativity or anything weird or odd, then you should maybe churn it off. But if you understand that what I am bringing forth is actual <coughs> positive information, then you'll, you'll re resonate with it. So you will resonate with the positive things that they have to say and they do have many positive things i i'm not saying don't i'm not saying don't listen to them but they do have some junk in there too well let's hope the information will get to them somehow um, yeah i do have another question it's a kind of a bizarre question but i did thought about uh, the essence of colors like the color gold is like infinity cross consciousness white is like uh, purity, red is like the grounding and root chakra. What is the meaning of the color black? Black is not to be used in color analyzations for humans because it is the color of neg ne negativity and darkness. So this is the only color that have a negative essence. But let me explain something to you. That is what its original purpose was, because that is how it was created to be. You can put positivity even into black, but like the deep indigo that is the, the third eye chakra is, appears at times to be almost black, but it is not. It has the deep, rich blue in it. But you see, you can add to the color black other things and bring it out of a negative uh, understanding. But when it, was, when it was first originated, that was all that it stood for, is nothingness, blackness, negativity, things of this nature. But do not always look at it and think negative thoughts, even though that was its original intent, you can bring other things to it. Is not the universe dark, but the sky filled with stars and, and filled with anomalies and beautiful things, so which light up that darkness, which makes that darkness purposeful and things... Yeah. I, I'm trying to make a point here, but I'm not sure if I'm doing it well. No, it's actually what I thought about also about uh, space and stuff like that. And yeah. maybe we yeah. misunderstood black. It is misunderstood in some ways because it it's what you believe it can be. You can add things to it and make it less of what it was intended to be originally and actually make it into something completely different. 
So the meaning is um, make it your own. It's like choose your own color. Yes, well, add to the black and make it something else. Okay, thank you very much. And so that's a rough one because a lot of people are would just tune right into that solid color, and that's not what I would do at this time. All right, uh, maybe it's time for me to go. Oh, do you want to go? Okay, perfect. Well, it was so lovely seeing you, Grendel. Blessings oh, to you. to see you, too. Thank it you, Grendel. It wasn't a laugh fest today, but it was pretty <laughs> serious. So, You're a laugh face. We have one thing for you, jazz hands, Grendel. Just remember. Jazz hands? Oh, my <laughs> God, what the freak is that? Ask Jim. Ask Jim. Jim will tell you. Oh, oh Jim. Oh, Jim. Yeah, well, guess what? Grindel <laughs> don't play that. <laughs> so, it's always uh, worth a try. It's worth a try. Yeah, you know, you, you'll get the jazz finger as well. <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs> I never right, got I'll the talk jazz to you finger. Later. Bless Have you. Have a good day, and I I love you all. I yeah. love you too. All right, thank take you, Grindel. <laughs> Good, night. Good night. Okay, we'll just wait to see who comes next. And then yeah. we'll go with Leela. Mm. Lila.